Yeah, hi everybody. And uh, let's continue with our lecture. And today we'll go and start our new Android project. So just click on uh, start a new Android Studio project. But if you have any existing, you can always use uh, open or you can also import from a version control like GitHub. And you can make use of other different different uh, project over here if you have uh, already. But since this is our first time that we are developing an Android Studio project, so we will be using a start a new Android Studio project. Just click on this one, the first one, the start a new Android Studio project, and it should start a new project for you. And here we have an option to choose a project template, and we can choose a different different template over here. But for us, we'll be using an empty. We will be not using any predefined template over here. I will just select on uh, empty activity over here and just click on next. And here we need to give our Android application name. And here is the package name. And here is the location where you want to save. And here is the language you want to use, whether you want to use a Kotlin. By default, it's a Kotlin. Or you want to use a Java, depending on you, and the minimum API level. So let's go and see this uh, all by uh, one by one. So the Android application is name of your Android application name or the app name that you want to give. So any the app name that you want to create, so you can make use of this one. So I'll just keep as a, uh, let's say we want to keep as a K-O-T-L-I-N, Kotlin, because we'll be selecting a Kotlin from here. And I will say Kotlin, demo app. So that will be my app name. And here we have a package name. So if you see the package name is a com.example.kotlin demo app. And you can see this is the com.example. This is your domain name. So make sure the package name is a uh, unique for all of your application that you are developing. So any if you make a package name that is common to the another app, then that will be a difficult situation whether when you want to upload upload it to a Google Play Store. So make sure the package name is always a unique one. So how can we make it unique one? By default, it's uh, your domain name. So if you have a domain name, as you know, if you are familiar with the domain name, domain name is a very unique name. So if you have a, if you own uh, any domain name, that we are very good. But if you don't have uh, any domain name, then you can just make use of your uh, like uh, any of your domain name. Maybe you can start with a com. Or maybe you can start with the info dot your name and the app name, or maybe you can just say a uh, com dot your business name or your company name or your school name, right? Or your last name, then the app name. So this way you can make a package name of uh, unique. So that's how we will be going to make a very unique package name, and I will just call it as a uh, com dot. I can just come that let me leave it as a default just for a demo purpose because I'm not going to upload this app to a Play Store, right? So I can make it as a default one, come that example that and this is my app uh, app name. This is come from here, the Kotlin demo app. And it is added over here. So that's the, how the package name is uh, concatenated with our domain name or the unique name plus the our app name. So whatever app name you give, then that, that, that will be added to our end. So make sure you uh, use a unique package name over here. Don't try to use a same package name for your different different app. That will be not possible, and you will have difficulties later when you want to upload it to a Google Play Store. And the save location, whenever you want to save it, you have any space where you want to. David, by default, I think you may need to create a one new folder if you want to separate it by like a, like a, you may want to separate by some of your demo app or your production app. So we can make a different different location and you can just open and select any of the location that you want to create. But for me, I will just use a default one and select the language, whether you are using Java or Kotlin. But we will be using a Kotlin for this lesson, and this is specifically for a Kotlin development environment, and we'll be only focusing on Kotlin, so how to use a Kotlin for Android development. 
and the minimum API level over here is uh, I can I will select uh, at least uh, 21 and the minimum API level over here is depend like uh, what is the app that you are targeting whether you are targeting for the a phone that has uh, Android Lollipop and Ava, or you want to target from what depend on you what what actually you are going to target. So you are want to run the app on uh, API level 5.0 or API level 21, which is Android 5.0 or a Lollipop. If you target a minimum of this one, then make sure that your app will be only available to install on this. Android Lollipop and Ava. It will if if your device or if your friend device of or if your family member that you want to test, then the device is like a uh, KitKat. So if you target a API level of 21, then your app will not run on uh, Android level API 20 or uh, 19. So it will not work below the API that you minimum API level that you mention over here. So just keep in mind that one that yeah where you are targeting so if you are targeting for android lollipop enabled then that's okay we can just make use of api level 21 so if your phone is greater than api level 21 or 21 then that's there should be no problem you can install it but if your phone is a less than a 21 api level 21 which is of android lollipop then there is a difficulty for you and so just make sure that you understand it clearly to how to target a minimum API level. And if you upload it to the Google Play Store, let's say your phone has just a KitKat and you cannot see your own app because uh, you targeted for uh, API level 21, but your phone is of API level 20 or 19. So that's why you cannot see your own app to download it. So that's how it will be working. So we'll just click on a minimum of a 5, uh, 5.0 or a Lollipop. And that's it, we'll just click on finish. This will take a bit time to download your credit wheel. So it will, you can see over here, it's downloading some uh, some file, you can see. The, so just wait and see. It may take a bit time depending on your internet. So I will be pausing my video over here and I'll just come back when all of this downloading and synchronizing has been completed. So it's asking for a security alert. So I will just allow the Windows uh, firewall over here. Just click on private and public because that's uh, no security relics over here. Just click on both of these and just allow it. And just allow it. And and what we'll do is let me synchronize it because it needs to connect to internet. So we have to allow it. So just wait for the gradle build and the synchronization to complete. And I think that's done. If you see the build is successful and the synchronizing of the index file is going on so that may take a bit time and overall then it should be working fine so just wait for the indexing to be get done indexing and everything is done over here and what we can do is just we can just minimize this one over here and you can see what's new in android uh, studio 3.5 you can just go through over here and I will, you can just click on assistant to hide or so and what we'll do is we have some of the project structure so this is our first uh, android app build successfully and not the app but uh, the project that we are working on is successfully built on so what we'll do is we will go on on the next lecture to see some of the android studio option that we can configure or like uh, we'll just go and walk through like some of the uh, available option like uh, what is uh, menus over here and what is the uh, coding part or the editor code editor and the project side so that's we'll be working on on uh, next lecture till then have a great day and let's meet up in the next lecture